episode 153 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. And I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg. My co-host, Warren Sklar, is off this week, but I have a great guest, a returning guest, Ms. Kelly Gamont from the Mac Observer's Daily Observations podcast. Hello, Kelly. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. Hi, hey, David. It's, it's always a pleasure to be here. I'm always excited when you have me on. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun here. This is pre-dub-dub, dub, I guess we could call this. Uh, this yes. is, uh, 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 in fact, uh, we have decided that uh, I'm going to have you come on uh, next week as well. And I'll talk a little more about that at the end of the show. But uh, so we can get a little bit of pre and a little bit of post-dub-dub. <laughs> dub. Yeah. So find out all kinds of things are going on uh, this week. Uh, uh, during uh, this busy week next week for Apple. But there's plenty of stuff to talk about this week. Uh, there's some new yeah. stories we found. Well, we will be doing our predictions with WWDC and uh, mm-hmm. beta's out and uh, maybe throw some tips and see where things go. So that's that's great about the show. We just have fun and talk and have fun, uh, see what uh, great things are happening with Apple this week. Yeah. Uh, so let's go dive into the news here. Uh, first story of the week uh, that we have, I found is uh, Mac Rumors. Apple highlights benefits of Wallet app. Apple Pay, Apple Cash on new web pages. Uh, Apple introduced mm-hmm. a little new mini website uh, that's dedicated to the Wallet app on the iPhone, highlighting the benefits and features that are available. And Apple explains that debit and credit cards can be added to the wallet and no added effort and makes them available with the Apple Pay and, uh, and, and on and on in the Apple Card. Uh, I think it's fine. This, is, this was overdue, I think. Uh, if you go to this site, and, and they got all animated, of course, having fun with it, and you could scroll through mm-hmm. this and Gives you all the uh, actually look like widgets. Actually, if you look at them, um, yeah, and uh, you know, it gives you some it gives you all the things that Apple does with the wallet. Um, and I, I think mm-hmm. that even a better place to refer back to see what they do. What do you think? I, think it's cool I, I really like it. Um, yeah. I think it's it's approachable. It's really nicely designed, and also um, I think it draws attention to wallet, which it really needs because it's very yeah. useful. Um, and if you have an Apple Watch, doubly so. And uh, I think a lot of people sort of discover on accident almost um, like, oh, the ticket that I bought online, like to the thing, uh, you know, can st- can live in my Apple wallet or my loyalty card for that place where I shop regularly can be yeah. in my Apple wallet or whatever. Like, I think you you sort of stumble on it by mistake almost. And so it doesn't it doesn't really show off its utility at all and so having something draw attention to it and having people talk about the website that draws attention to it i think is just going to help prove the utility of it because i have a load of stuff in there um, oh, yeah, me too in fact i maxed and, out different cards i have in there this is apple just said to me uh, now you can't add any more cards in there <laughs> you have too many <laughs> um, yeah and no i mean and, and with the watch rocks. like you know yeah. yeah i mean and and if you have if you have an apple watch like a whole lot of the stuff that wallet does can also happen from your arm instead of from your phone, which is Absolutely. even better. And, uh, and I think that opportunity is pretty great. And so I'm, I'm glad that they're showing it off because it's a thing that I think a whole lot of people don't really realize. Uh, and I hope that part of what they highlight with Apple Pay, I haven't had a, a lot of time to really dig into the site, but I hope one of yeah. the things that they talk about is the security of your credit card in the wallet oh, app absolutely. and, and, and it's... by extension in Apple Pay, because Almost every single time I've talked to somebody about using Apple Pay, they basically say, like, I don't want to carry my credit card number around on my phone. And I'm like, you're not. <laughs> let me tell a, you. Totally let me tell you, number. it's a fake number that nobody can do anything with unless they have your phone and right. the number and your face your now. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, having that security, I'm like, I would much rather have my phone with my credit card on it than my actual credit card. Because my actual credit card, somebody could walk away with and actually use, and nobody can do that with the things in my wallet. So I mean, my, I mean, I just, I mean, when I'm in a hurry, I want to grab a quick bite to eat, let's say, to go through a drive through <laughs> a restaurant, and um, and they take Apple Pay. Oh, I just love it. I mean, especially if they have mm-hmm. coupons, you can get put your phone up and scan the bar, the QR code, get your discount, and then just take your watch and and pay yep. for it, and you're and you're done. And, and it, especially during this 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 uh, age of the pandemic, as was going on this mm-hmm. last year, is more so. I I don't think mm-hmm. I remember 
ever taking any cash out of my wallet for the last at least the last year because I it, I don't mm-hmm. want first off I, you know you're worried about contamination and someone touching the uh, touching it and this yep. way it's all touchless you just you just do it so I think this is a great way that Apple really to highlight yeah. this and we've talked about this many times here on the show about yeah. uh, about and it's Apple faster cash that's the other thing I like about it it's faster and it's safer it is so. And then the Apple Cash card, which is great because uh, I have an yeah. Apple, car- Apple card and uh, I, but, yeah. but I just bought my iPad on there and you got to you get the little, the little nest egg <laughs> that builds up and then, then you can just start spending yep. your little cash, extra bonus cash you got there. I mean, 3%, not much, but on the Apple purchase, but you get 2% on everything else with, uh, with, Apple, yeah. pay, with Apple Pay. So but it's good stuff. Yeah, check that out. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and I know uh, a lot of people who took the, the Apple Pay Cash, basically, and hooked it to their App Store account so yeah. like so i'm spending good, you know yeah. like overall like i'm spending a lot less money in the app store because i'm spending the the cashback money or whatever that i'm getting from my apple card True, instead yeah. of sort of real money and then that way like you know because also like if you have everything from your apple card go there and then uh like if you're if you're me and you pay for apple music 99 bucks a year because you don't buy a bunch yep. of other stuff from Apple, <laughs> then a bunch of other yeah. services anyway, then uh, you hook that up. And as you use your card throughout the year, you know, if you rack up enough, like you basically get a really good deal on Apple Music. So oh, I'm going to put that what in I the do. show notes. I didn't even think that's of that. That's what I do. For- <laughs> yeah, because you can connect your app and then or like if you buy music on iTunes or or things like that, like it's nice to have sort of that little you know the kitty and you just you know absolutely hey. well, that's what people do it's I like they, it's like finding twenty dollars in your pocket you know but, but regularly that's what i was talking to someone so i got about seven hundred dollars built up in my cash card mm-hmm. like yeah oh, that's that's pretty good but, but you must have spent a lot of money <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's uh, a lot of money yeah, it's, but, it's a nice nice little nest egg to put in there yeah so yeah all right There's and my then tip. uh Next story here on 9to5Mac, uh, the discontinued HomePod, now widely unavailable at uh, Apple stores, but still in stock online. Uh, uh, this is It's been over 80 days since Apple announced, uh, sadly, that the HomePod is being discontinued and now appears to be winding down as the sale of the sales of the smart speaker at uh, retail stores, even though availability mm-hmm. continues online. Uh, most physical stores do not have a HomePod <laughs> available, and I think the, the Space Gray one, which I have, uh, mm-hmm. are, um, are gone. The white ones were the only ones that were really basically left. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, interestingly, they say as, as we approach WWDC um, that Apple may be finally running low on stock. Uh, and... Uh, and we'll be talking. About, we'll be talking about that in a little bit here, as far as what we think with home, with the home, uh, home pod yeah. and home in, in general. Uh, but I. I it was interesting. I know that uh, they they had well, they were still when they were still selling them. People were looking up the model when they would get the when they buy it and they would get it. It was a model that was made. You know this. You know this. The HomePod was four years ago. Like originally, you know, like yeah. A, one of the first original stock. Like uh, of, the first of, batch. Of home, a first batch of HomePods, and that kind of told us that. Hmm. Maybe, maybe the home pop didn't sell very well after all. If they had that yeah. much stock left over, uh, but what do you think of this? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, I'm I'm kind of of two minds about it. Like, I never had any interest in the home pod. Like, I was mildly interested in the computational audio, right? Uh, because the tech behind it is nifty. Really, is what, you know what it comes down to. Like, it's cool that like however you decide to set it it figures out like where the wall is and like where the sound actually needs to go and figures out where the other one is in relation and like which is left and which is right in order like they figure all of that out amongst themselves and i think that's awesome and i really really love the idea of that and and the technology that went into it because really really smart people spent a really long time making that stuff happen the way that it did and i and it's super cool i have absolutely no use for it in my house um the home pod mini at ninety nine dollars is de- was something I definitely got into. Um, I got one for my birthday, and uh, I and I love it because I have a really nice speaker in my kitchen now, uh, and because of the direction I came at the mini, because I ca- I had an an echo, an an echo dot with a crappy speaker, mm-hmm. and then I went from that to the HomePod mini. So from that to the HomePod mini was a huge upgrade. So there's all these people that have the mini who who sort of went down. To the mini because they had a home pod and now they have a home pod mini and they're like well the mini is just not a home pod and i'm like well yeah it's not but you know it's way better than the dot i was using so to me it's great so like i get it but also i feel like it was almost a public experiment and this is a thing that i've thought as soon as they discontinued it which is that like it wasn't 
it wasn't necessarily like, it was never meant to be the iPod. It right. was never meant to be the iPhone. It was never meant to be the iPad. It was an experiment and they put it out to see what would happen because Apple wanted to learn something from it. What Absolutely. that is, we haven't seen yet. Nope. And it's going to be one of those things where like Apple made this baffling move out of nowhere to sell people this ridiculously expensive speaker. speaker. And we don't know why. And, you know, five years from when they discontinued it, like we're all going to look back on this on, you know, in touch with iOS episode 600 and something. And we're going to go, okay, so what they were actually like from here, the HomePod makes perfect sense because we went HomePod da, 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 right. to this thing that we just, that they just announced. And now it's, now the picture is clear. Um, so they learned something from that. What? I don't know. And I can't wait to see how they apply it because there's yeah. a whole lot of really cool technology in it. There really is. Um, I'm interested in, I'm interested in why I ha I have a theory about why they killed it. And I'm, I'm curious if, uh, in favor of the mini anyway. And I'm curious if, if uh, that theory holds up. So we may find out very mm -hmm. possible. Uh, next story. Uh, <clears throat> this was in Mac rumors, uh, Apple TV app, which is starting to f basically show up everywhere. Now these days is now on the Android TV OS, which I was very surprised to hear about this. And Google promised this in December of last year, the Apple TV app would expand to more devices in the Android TV OS ecosystem in the near future. Apple TV app, which of course offers everybody to access to Apple TV plus mm -hmm. uh, content and more is now available to download in the Google play store. I haven't even tried it yet. Cause I have one of those TiVo stream, uh, 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 which is, Android, uh, of course, because you know mm -hmm. me, I have every known device plugged <laughs> into a TV, so I can I can watch whatever I feel like uh, Roku uh -huh. and, and the and the uh, the, the, the TiVo uh, stream. It's which is basically a small little guy, but it it's pretty powerful, surprisingly. And the Apple TV, mm -hmm. of course. So it's good to good yeah. to see that, that Apple t is putting Apple TV Plus everywhere, and you're just basically you're going to be able to watch. And there's no excuse yeah. not to watch Ted Lasso. <laughs> I <laughs> That's the primary thing that people need to take Very away from the story July. is that it's, it's coming. <laughs> absolutely. And I'm going to take the opportunity to plug um, over at the incomparable. They, uh, we're doing a rewatch of Ted Lasso episode by episode. Oh, and uh, I got and I got to host. Uh, it came out last week, two weeks ago. So um, I don't remember what the timing is because I'm bad at that sort of math. But um, we recorded and we're recording an episode at a time and then uh, like one a week. So that you can watch one a week until, in, until uh, the the last episode, and then we'll we'll like the week before season two starts, we'll have the the season finale out as an episode that everybody gets to listen to. So yep. I got to host an episode over at the Incomparable, nice. um, and it was episode three, which I adore, which was the one titled Trent yeah. Grimm, the Independent," and um, for people who who are familiar and it was a lot of fun and i might get to pop up on another episode we haven't recorded all of them yet so we'll kind of see how that goes but there's an incomparable um if you go over to the incomparable about the incomparable.com you'd think i'd be better with words me but um over at the incomparable.com in the tv feed there is a ted lasso rewatch and i think we're calling it football is life and uh it's a lot of fun and Basically, like everybody who talks about this show is so happy and they really love it. And so you basically get to spend a little bit of time with a bunch of people nerding out about something that makes them feel really good. And so even if it's not, you should watch it. But even if it's not a show you watch, you get to listen to a bunch of people be really excited and really happy about something that makes them really happy. And just hearing that, like getting to if if listening to it is half as nice as recording it was, yeah. um, it's just warm and fuzzy, like the whole time you're listening it's so so great so I'm, I'm you can honest. go check out you can go check out the rewatch and have a good time listening to a bunch of people nerd out about a thing that they've watched a bunch of times already and with this is so much fun so well, we're gonna link that in show i will notes, plug so. that but the thing the thing about the the tv app coming everywhere yeah. i am fascinated by this and partly because i feel like tv apple tv the tv app itself <clears throat> and tv plus because the whole reason they want everybody to have the TV app is so that everybody will have TV Plus. Exactly. Um, uh, same as like the whole reason we gave everybody iPods was so they would fill them up with stuff from the iTunes store. You know, same idea. Yep. But I think this is an even bigger move. I think this is a bigger move than the, than the iPod. I think this is a bigger move than the iPhone because those were still technology products. Those were things that right. people could buy. They were 
after a fashion, they were computers that people could buy that Apple would sell you. And TV Plus is not that. It is a fundamental change in the way Apple does business. It is a brand new thing in the way Apple does business. It is a brand new arena where Apple does business. And I don't think... I don't think a lot of people are recognizing this as a seismic change, the way that it's going to end up being, because I don't think this is a hobby. I think they've taken this way more seriously than they've taken a whole lot of products lately, to be completely honest, um, because I think there's other stuff that other things that Apple wants, other computers Apple wants to sell me that do not get the love that they deserve on a regular basis. Um, <clears throat> looking at you, iPod, iPad mini. And I feel like it's really important that it get recognized. And I don't think, I don't think a lot of people are quite there yet. And for another plug, Charlotte Henry is a person who pitched this to me and explained it to me and was like, this isn't a computer you can buy like everything else Apple has ever sold you. And when she put it like that, that was the thing that made it click for me. Because yeah. yes, this isn't, this is not the thing. This is not a thing that they've ever done before. And this is not, um, a traditional business model. It is a traditional business model, but it's not a traditional business model Apple ever had to be party to. All of the things about this are new and different. And so the fact that Apple is taking this seriously by making absolutely certain that everybody everywhere has the opportunity to do this uh, is, is the part that I think is really interesting about it. So every time they do that, I feel like it's just sort of another point for Charlotte in the column of this is exactly what this is exactly what's happening and this is and and it needs to be getting a lot more attention so yep, absolutely and just to just to smoothly pivot that into another plug charlotte talks about this a lot on her podcast which is called media, media plus. plus which is great and she talks to desperately interesting people and also me about different things that are happening in the media space and she approaches it as though she's covering apple the media company and I'm not hearing that from a lot of other places, which is part of why I think her show is so great. So you should yeah. check that one out too. I agree. All right. So then the last story here is, um, this is an Apple world today. Uh, iPhones are the hi, most popular. Uh, hi, Steve. Uh, iPhones are the most popular devices for trade in upgr upgrade programs. The top device is the 10 R. Well, I'm using this 10 R right now as my webcam. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, iPhone accounts for the top five devices received during the first quarter of 2021 for trade-ins wow. and upgrade programs. This is per a new report from Assurance, a provider of lifestyle and housing housing solutions. Okay, um, and basically what they did is they just did a re uh, did a report analysis of the mobile device trade-in and upgrade market for the first quarter of 2021. It revealed mobile trade-in industry returned more than 668 million dollars to U.S. consumers. During, during the first quarter of 2021, that was a 25% increase uh, over wow. the same period last year. And they said the most popular iPhones that are being traded in is, again, the 10R, followed by the 8, the 8 Plus, the 10, and the 7. And I'm not surprised because I, um, I think I, I did, a family member just uh, traded in the iPhone 8. Fortunately, the camera was broken, so they, they, they cut the price down. So, yeah. but they still were going to give, give her a hundred and, I think uh, before that was discovered uh, that there was a uh, $125 for a, for a, what is that a five or six year old phone? A four year phone? Was that four or five years? Something like that. Uh, let's see. We got the eight and 10 at the same time. So we got the 10. Uh, then the next year we got so the 10R and 10S and then the 11 and then the 12. So yeah, it's four, four and a half. Yep. So, and then the, the iPhone Seven was the last of the of the models. So, that's great. Yeah. Great to see. And I, and I always knew that iPhone trading values and, any, and iPads for that matter. I mean, I traded mm -hmm. in my my iPad Pro twenty eighteen model to get my my iPad Pro twenty twenty one. I got four hundred fifty five dollars for for a yeah. three year old iPad. So, um, yeah. So trading values are very very good for 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 the iPhone and the iPad for sure. So I think this is uh, this is great news. Yeah. So. Indeed. And I also like knowing that lots of people are trading them in. So I know people aren't just, you know, throwing them away or, or, uh, you know, doing something, exactly. uh, irresponsible with them because it means like if they're no longer useful, it's a thing that can be recycled or that they're being redeployed in some other sort of useful fashion. So I like the idea of, um, like if you're not going to use it, 
um, you know, make sure that it goes to something where uh, it can get additional mileage. So I like that. Absolutely. All right. Uh, moving on to the topics for this week, we always talk about beta and beta uh, iOS and iPad OS 14.7. Uh, beta 2 was released this mm-hmm. past week and uh, uh, can be dev- downloaded through the developer, developer center. And I believe it's going to be out in public beta pretty soon here. If it hasn't been already, it usually is released not too far behind after that. Um, and it looks like more of the updates are more focused on under the hood bug performances, improvements, bug fixes that weren't yeah. addressed in 14.6. And yeah, there's been a little a few bugs here and there with 14.6, I must say. Um, and, uh, and, uh, when paired with the company HomePod 14.7 software, 14.7 will allow the home app to set multiple timers on a HomePod or a HomePod mini so that they've, 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 they've added that finally. Um, hallelujah. So, so <laughs> good, good to know with that. And, um, that's when iOS, I don't think watch OS had too much, uh, uh, as far as any, uh, new things, uh, check in here to see, uh, and, uh, I, I don't think that's really much in, in, uh, of any updates other than, uh, probably bug fixes like they always do. Um, yeah. and that they don't say much. And of course, tvOS does never has anything to even cry home about though. What, why they're what they're doing to that so yeah i don't uh, know but uh again i always say if you're if you don't want to live on the edge don't don't put betas on your on your devices uh, no don't, don't, don't be warren then warren always gets <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like what i always say that because he likes living on the edge like we know here that's what you listen to, the, to this yeah. show so uh but uh, i do i do have like actually this 10r is running 14.7 uh because it's my secondary device so and i have right. an ipad I, and I have an ipad pro first generation uh 12.9 inch uh, and I've run that on beta on there as well. So uh, mm-hmm. then I just don't, uh, I just don't do it on my primary. So I can't, I just, yeah. I don't want to be miserable. So, no. But, and I, but. I personally adhere, especially in the summer, uh, which we're about to talk about. I like to adhere to the Star Trek movie rule of betas, which is only install the even numbered ones. Oh, don't bother okay. with only pay attention to the even numbered ones. Don't bother with the odd numbered ones, which also means you are saving yourself all of the, uh, I'm going to rub my arm against this cheese grater of beta one, which <laughs> you don't ever really want to do. Uh, so that's definitely a thing that um, like that is a that is a, a rule that has served me well over the years. I will yes. say the, the track movie rule of betas. Yes. And that must make absolute sense. So. All right. The topic of the week this week, and it's going to be the topic <laughs> next week, too, because dub dub WWDC is going to be uh, kicked off next week as we record this on uh, Monday, June 7th, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time. We'll have our Apple events like we always do. And for me, it's a holiday. And many of us in, this, in the Apple world here, it's our our day to, to, to get away from work and really have fun and see what Apple is going to talk about. And I'm sure it's going to be the, the same type of conference that they've they had they had last year because of being Mm -hmm. not being able to have it in person and it'll probably be a well-oiled recorded machine that they'll have in place and 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 i'm sure they'll keep it to an hour like they've they have been so so it'll be it'll be good to see but uh but i wanted to to touch upon and that's what's going to be fun about this two-part show here uh this week and next week because we're gonna do our predictions for this week and and obviously i've got some uh, links in the show notes for uh for for what uh what what to expect and uh Mm -hmm. and what to see obviously see it's a developer conference we know it's going to be the new versions of ios ipad os mac os um Mm -hmm. and uh hmm, home os there was a little bit of a rumor that they were saying potentially they could come up with another os that would go right to join those os's that we already know and love um we have an article from apple world today hi steve again uh and uh he he, uh the um uh, there's they're saying potentially this be, could be called home os and most likely it'd be a re- rebranding of home kit and and mm-hmm. uh, home kit of course is just a software framework it's not really a technically a, an os but what it's that kind of leads me to believe is could apple have up its sleeve another home pod that might have a screen we've talked about this before or what do you think I have many theories about this. I'm glad nobody can watch me make faces except <laughs> on YouTube forever, uh, where this YouTube. is going to be recorded uh, for all time. So here, like I saw this go by and I thought about it for a second and then I thought about it more. And when I take this, because, because every like 
everything is just sort of a, a synthesis, a synthesizing of whatever you, whatever other sorts of things that you've taken in, right? Like everybody's just a recipe of the stuff that they take in and then they draw their own conclusions from. So here's what I have going around in my head. I have home OS as a, this might be a thing. They might mm-hmm. upgrade from home kit Perfect. to a real boy as, as they say. Um, and the reason that I find that really fascinating is because this ties in neatly with my theory about the, um, <clears throat> about why they killed the home pod and get comfy everybody and for people who don't know i'm gonna give you a very brief history lesson years and years ago i used to work at a site called the unofficial apple weblog it was tuaw.com and when i was there we used to do a podcast i know that will shock you and uh one of the things that we did on that podcast was eventually we sort of had this th- there 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 became this joke because i love a good theory and like the crazier the theory is the happier i am to hear it for the most part, like there was a point where we spent the better part of a year declaring as fact that the white iPhone was the Verizon iPhone because we kept hearing each of those was coming, but they never were. Uh, so like that just turned into the theory. So I run a home. It turned into Kelly's house of crackpot theories. And so anytime <laughs> anybody has a crazy theory like this, they bring them to me. And we used to joke about how Philip Elmer DeWitt and his obsession with Apple making an actual television was one of the things that lived in my house all the time. And so then it just sort of became this shorthand for here's a crazy thing I'm about to tell people. So here's how this all fits together in my brain. We're hearing rumors about home OS, like, Basically, HomeKit expanding into its own unit. Right. Um, I think, in my mind, I have spun this out into being a thing that you could do the way you used to be able to do macOS server back in the day, where if you had a machine that you wanted to upgrade to be a server machine, you just installed this server app on it, and it was just a utility that let you do a bunch of server sorts of things, and that was all you had to do. Right. And the reason I think that is because Apple has made very clear that there are resident devices. And that resident device, like if you want to use HomeKit for stuff, you need something that's the resident device on your network, whether it's an iPad or it's an Apple TV, or it could be a HomePod now, or it could back in the day before they killed it, right? But they killed it because the HomePod mini has something in it called a thread radio and the HomePod Max does not. I think they killed the HomePod and put the thread in the mini because remember that was the other thing about yeah. it was like the intercom and all of that right. and all of the inter- interoperability. Wow, I got that out on the first try. Of, um, of, of all of the, of like you can tell your watch, like tell all the home pods, get everybody's butt in the car, and like all the home pods go off. Hey, dad said get everybody's butt in the car, or whatever it was that was that little demo, and how all of those things operated together. So here's the thing is that there's been a fair amount of attention paid to thread lately because uh, thread is this very, very low power mesh network. Um, it's similar to like hue bulbs. Hue bulbs are a mesh network as well. And so like, you know, you get a little further away from the hub, a little further away from the hub, but each of those light bulbs becomes its own repeater as part of that network. And thread does the same sort of thing with thread devices. And so I think part of the reason that they put it in the mini and part of the reason the mini is attractively priced compared to the full size HomePod is because then people will buy them and put them all over the house. And then bam, everybody's got a thread network. Because if you've got a HomePod mini, maybe a couple, maybe you buy a new Apple TV 4K because the new Apple TV 4K has thread in it too. Um, <clears throat> some of the Google devices also have thread. This is like an apolitical radio that people can use. And it's just this um, mesh network. And you can use it for uh, lots of different things. Like I think, um, Echo devices, like if you have an Echo base, I think some of the newer Echo bases have thread radios in them and all of this stuff. And so they're um, they're super efficient. Like I'm not going to bore people with the networking of this, but they're super efficient and you can have loads and loads of these sorts of devices on your network without maxing it out. Those are the two things you basically need to know. Like hundreds, I want to say it's like 250 or 299, something like that. Like it's a very, very, very high number of thread devices that can all coexist happily on the same network. So if you think about like, even if I took every single light bulb in my house and every single mobile device and every single TV, like I'm still not going to get to 200 devices even, right? So even if you did it that way, um, lot like if all of these things are HomeKit compatible and there's a HomeKit hub and all of these sorts of things, uh, like if you're using Thread 
to have all of these things communicate. It's really fast. It doesn't take a little power. So you, you don't have to worry about like it's going to kill your the battery on your phone or whatever, you know, if you're trying to communicate with these devices or, or do things with part of them. Okay. So if you take so if you take this chunk of information and you add it to the piece where um, I had Dave Hamilton on and we were talking about the Apple TV and like, why didn't Apple give it sort of an actual upgrade into anything? Uh, my actual upgrade for the Apple TV is why didn't they make it a stick? And uh, because that would also make it cheaper. They would probably have to make a cheaper one. And other people said sort of like, why can't you just give me a cheaper one? Because it costs like I can buy two or three or more of any other streaming device for the cost of a single Apple TV, mm-hmm. Apple TV 4K. <clears throat> and Dave said they're going to make a sound bar. So if you take that yeah. piece and you add it to the thread piece and you add it to the thing I said about the HomePod in the first place, which was Apple is learning from this. I don't know what yet, but they're learning. If you take all of that together, I kind of feel like maybe Dave is onto something or maybe that the, the Apple TV is going to take a different shape. It's going to evolve Pokemon yeah. style and it's going to turn into something else and it's going to become something, something else that is more useful. And maybe it's not even going to be maybe like the TV app is going to be one piece of it. Maybe they just give up on all of the app store of it and you just have the TV app and you add channels to it instead of adding apps to your Apple TV. And so you get that and then you put that like that gets installed on you on this soundbar you get from Apple or whatever that does amazing computational audio in this teeny little space. And it's like 200 bucks, but you get all the stuff that you would have gotten from an Apple TV anyway. And it's got a thread radio in it. So it can be your home kit resident device. Um, I think I've cornered the market on crazy theories right there. You so have, there you go. But I think, uh, but this this could be something legit. I think this could be something that uh, that we may be hearing on Monday. That uh, I'm home. hearing that made me more excited because I have been sort of fundamentally displeased with the home with the home app and yeah, by extension sort of home kit for a long time because I really it really irritates me that two adults live in my house who are married. And one of us had to invite the other one to to the house, oh, I know. but we still don't ever have the same access level to anything. And it drives me up a wall. I'm like, does everyone at Apple live alone? I don't I, I don't no. get it. So, no. yeah. So I, I find that personally endlessly frustrating. And so, like, I resisted uh, most home kit stuff for a long time because I was like, I can't get over that. I have to invite my husband to my house. I think it's dumb. <laughs> And I got very good with my wife. So, (laughs) Uh, yeah, like I just found it endlessly frustrating and sort of like offensive. I'm like, this is not an Apple experience. This is not what I want from this company. This isn't how this is supposed to go. So I really like the idea that HomeKit stops being this amorphous thing that's sort of a thing, but not quite that not everybody supports, that not everybody's paying attention to, and that maybe it can just turn into build your thing to com- to to be compatible with to run on our os like you know and and just make it play nice within these parameters as opposed to compatible with this framework that we've given you and maybe that'll just make it easier for more people to do i don't know let's hope um then the other one that co- was interesting another prediction is uh messages the messages apps kind of could could it get a finally get a overhaul so it's been you know, quite a while since apple's done anything with messages um notably th- uh this actually was mark german up, uh, from bloomberg uh, that uh put this out and he's pretty pretty reliable source when it comes to apple <clears throat> rumors um and uh saying that ios 15 will probably add some improvements to message i message which uh, could uh be mirroring all the uh, all the materials that uh, the wwdc is out uh showing what they're, they're going to be doing here uh notably automatic replies statuses and notifications is, is some of the things we're talking about but I, I like this other one here too for really maybe apple is trying to look to finally compete against facebook's what app whatsapp um to have 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 messages be more than just you know text messages and and sending gifs and and your your emojis and uh you know me emojis too um so i'm i'm gonna be interesting to see what where, where, where messages go and i messages go uh the when we hear about this on Monday, what do you think? I want them to stop being speech balloons. I have mm-hmm. wanted this for low the like a, probably six months after I got an iPhone and got a good look at messages and went, 
you are wasting all that space making it look like a cute little speech balloon. I get it. I used to have plain, ordinary, boring text messages before. Right. Like, this does not feel like an upgrade to me. So just give me just give me little blocks of text. You have a block text. I have a block text. Let it go all the way across the screen. <laughs> Apparently, that's like mind blowing, you know, that I could use all the real estate I have on my device. It was more of an issue when um, it was more of an issue when we didn't have near as much screen, obviously, than we do now. But now I just find it even more sort of insulting almost that yeah. <laughs> that I have all this space I could be using for, for text and things and you're not letting me. And I find that really aggravating. Um, I don't want, like, I would gladly trade every single iMessage effect. I would gladly trade um, Memoji and like getting to record <laughs> the little animal videos and stuff. I like them and they're silly, but I would gladly trade all of that for getting 40% of my real estate back on my screen. I yeah. want it so much. Like, we get it. We know who's talking. You can leave them the same, you know, leave a little, you know, make it stripes. Like, the blue part's me and the gray part's you or whatever. I don't care. But, like, do better. Like, I've just been frustrated with this for the longest time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I find it hard to so. believe that it doesn't ever get better. And so, like, that's... Like, I want that one thing for messages. I want it to actually take advantage of all of this beautiful screen that you that I've paid for, you know, because you continue to make my phones bigger, but you won't let messages get any more efficient <laughs> with that space. Oh, you guys. All right, we'll see. Space. I yes. think, think it's got some promise here. A uh, couple hardware potential announcements in, in the iOS world. Maybe <clears throat> the AirPods 3 could, could, could be announced. I, I don't want to. I kind of doubt it. No. Uh, but I was going to say... I'm throwing out their potential. I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised. I mean, the AirPods Pro are still pretty decent, and uh, they have the spatial audio. And uh, but although I'm uh, obviously Bluetooth can't can't decode lossless audio, and that whole debate we had with the lossless yeah. audio announcement. So, not much else to say about that. This one was kind yeah. of interesting. Uh, you know, it's well, a, we'll I just bought up. AirPods Pro. I just bought a new pair of AirPods Pro. Oh, cool. Like I didn't have them. I had regular AirPods. Yeah, I have both. And. Well, Mr. Kelly has made off with them because he tried. I have a number of other pairs of True Wireless headphones, and he yeah. tried all of them, and finally went like none of these work because he ends up with like consecutive uh, team meetings and things where he needs to have headphones. Right. And so finally, I said, I, I said, okay, you've tried, you know, you've tried the rest. Now try the best. I was like, take these for a week and don't talk to me about them until you've used them in and out for a week. And I really wanted to know what they would be like on his work Windows machine. Yeah. And his primary complaint, he, he basically had no other complaints about them except, well, now when I use them, I'm that guy in the meeting with my Apple I, with my Apple AirPods in my ears. And I'm like, is that really your only concern? He goes, well, yeah, they connect instantly. They sound just fine. They're comfortable in my ears. I can switch them out easily when I need to charge them again. Everything else about them is great. It's just that now I'm that guy in the meeting. And I'm like, if that's your big complaint, you don't have any complaints about these AirPods. So I I graciously allowed him to adopt <laughs> my AirPods. And then I went and bought AirPod Pros because that was what I wanted anyway. So um, I waited until we got that spring event where we got the new um, iPads announced. And because there were rumblings about AirPods then too. And I was like, I'll just wait until the new version of AirPods is out. And then uh, there wasn't one. So I pulled the trigger on my own. So uh, there better not be any at Dub Dub because I just, I finally got a pair <laughs> and I don't want to be that late to that party. So, um, and then, uh, this one's probably a little more off the wall, but uh, we 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 talked about this uh, on uh, Back to the Future. Uh, go with the guy in morning last night um, as we record this. Uh, it is the 20th anniversary of the iPad, uh, iPod, iPod. Excuse me, I can't believe it. 20 years ago this year, so the first iPod came out with the FireWire connector and uh, the 5,000 songs in your pocket and the mechanical dial and the, the small little screen. Uh, so. Obviously, I'll be right back. I have to go yell at some kids on my lawn. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> it's been a long time. Uh, and uh, the, well, the only thing that's only iPod that's left is the iPod mm. touch. And they haven't really touched the iPod touch in what, three, four years. So I said, well, do you, I think maybe they could come up with something, you know, maybe enhance it. I, I was thinking possibly it could be, uh, it could be one that, that that'll work with the, the lossless audio. Then maybe something with the audio uh, for the 20th anniversary that that they could take advantage of that on that device. 
could they add something like cellular data on it? You know, make it similar to what an iPod, iPad is. I, I think that's a little more far fetched. Um, uh, for those who don't well, want an iPhone, um, and uh, in fact, I have a link here from Nine to Five Mac uh, that uh, has a, uh, a little, little crazy concept of uh, a, a being like an Air, Air, AirPods Max or a iPod Max of some sort, um, which I think is a little, little off the wall. But uh, it's always fun to, to to speculate these kind of things. But uh, yeah, well, yeah. What, you, what do you think of the iPod, iPod Touch? It's hard for me to say iPod, iPad. <laughs> well. I have a soft spot for the iPod Touch because that was yeah, the primary too. device that, fe- well, I, I love it. I love my iPod. I still have a 30 pin 5.5 gen iPod video uh, because it was an amazing advance of technology that let me carry around the Star Wars trilogy in my pocket. And <laughs> it made me very happy. And so I did that. Um, Because it wasn't until the 5.5 Gen 1 came out that it was finally an 80 gigabyte device. And so it would back up my entire hard drive because it was it was a Firewire drive that you could play music from. And uh, and so then because the bulk of what was on my hard drive was music anyway, I had a backup of my laptop all the time, my PowerBook G4. And I lived in the future with that little slab of with that little slab of metal. And I love it still to this day. I use it to play music in my car on the regular and. I feel like, so I have a soft spot for it for that. I have a soft spot for the iPod touch because it was the device that powered app camp. And I love it. So I, I I love it. And I spent so much time with them, uh, with those devices in particular, but I think I, I, as, as you were talking about this, and as I was thinking about what, what an iPod could do, like think of all the things that you can do now over Wi-Fi because you can have FaceTime over Mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. Um, you can you could probably FaceTime audio with people um, if they also have iPhones. You know the same way like you could FaceTime or you could have a FaceTime audio call with those people. You could Skype. You can Zoom. You can all kinds of other sort of video chat over Wi-Fi. So if you took the iPod Touch and made it the size of a 5S because it's still not even like 5S sized. I don't think the latest iteration even is quite that big. No. If you made it like 5S sized and gave it Touch ID. And then gave it like actual Wi-Fi capabilities and a decent camera because it could be a little thicker. You give it a decent camera and you give it a decent microphone and you turn it into that thing that doesn't require a cellular plan. I think that would be the magic of that device because now everybody can have one. And as long as you have an Apple ID, you're set because you can watch Apple TV Plus on it, obviously. You could do all your fitness plus workouts. You could stream Apple Music. You could uh, whatever other streaming video, like maybe, you know, on a slightly bigger, a little bit nicer screen. Maybe you could like watch something if you really wanted to. And you can talk to everybody. It could be a little pocket communicator that lots of people could have that wouldn't have any commitment. And right. the thing that I always think about that I don't think gets as much credit as it should for particularly um, in the consumer end of stuff is that. The thing that everybody used to do when they would go to Dub Dub is they would uh, go across the street when it was in San Francisco. They would go across the street to the Apple store and they would buy a new iPod and that iPod touch would become their beta device because it would do everything except make phone calls. And it ran exactly the same operating system. And then if that one crashed or if you had to restore it every 20 minutes because you installed beta one because you didn't listen to Kelly and her Trek film rule of betas, <laughs> then uh, it didn't matter because it wasn't very like. It was a thing you could, like, if it crashed, it had no impact on your life. Your phone could still get phone calls. Your computer still had all of the operating system and everything that it needed. Your iPad is in, is, is secure because you don't have a beta on it. And if this thing crashes, oh well. And loads and loads and loads of people I know used it as a great developer device because Mm -hmm. I can actually test it on honest to God hardware. But it doesn't yeah. have to be the. It doesn't have to interfere with my ability to make a phone call or send a text message or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And I think there's still a serious need for that device because the simulator is great, but the simulator is still not an actual phone or an actual iPad or anything like that. So, right. even in a, if it was an iPod Touch, uh, to have that actual device, I think would make a real difference. So I Absolutely. think there's a whole. I think there's definitely a sweet spot for that, and I think uh, if Apple's not considering it, they should because there's a lot of reasons it would be a compelling device for a lot of people. Absolutely. 
then uh, we just move on and just briefly we'll talk about uh, the OSs that will be coming out. And it, I mean, it's almost yes. a given. It's going to be iOS <laughs> 15, iPad, o, iPad OS 15, a TV OS 15, Watch mm-hmm. OS 8. Um, one I really want to stand out is, you know, Apple, of course, just released the iPad, iPad Pros, especially the 12.9 inch with that uh, unbelievable Retina XDR display. And it makes me really makes it really into a true potential desktop or, or laptop replacement. But a lot of people belly aching about the fact that, you know, I, iPad OS is still very limited what it can do versus Mac OS and having a Mac or Mac, a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air. Um, could the iPad OS really be revolutionary as we as I, I have in the notes here uh, and come up with something that 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 the, it could really take advantage of the M1 processor that's now in the iPads the the 11 inch which I have and the 12.9 inch uh, as well um, I'm, I'm I'm thinking Apple is going to come up with hope I'm hoping that they're going to announce something that with iPad OS that's going to, to really stand out for it well, and I, we talked about this on Mac Voices Live when we got them. Um, right. I I basically bought the M1 iPad Pro, about the 11 inch, uh, and I bought it uh, basically because I'm betting that that's what's going to happen. That in yeah. it, that you know at that point a month from now, um, that Apple's going to announce something uh, a fundamental shift. And I think um, I like the way Brian put it. We talked about this on Daily Observations. I talk about the I talk about my new iPad a lot. And <laughs> When we talked about it on Daily Observations, I said, like, this is another one of those moments where we look back and things make sense because because we can see where we are and we can see the stuff that didn't make sense then. And the thing in this case, I said, you know, I think they split iPad OS off because they knew that they were building their own silicon and they knew that they were going to be able to drop something desktop class into this device. And so right. that's why we got it. That's why we got iPad OS. They had to fork it off so that it could evolve in its own fashion. And Brian said, and I almost I like his idea better, I think. Brian said, I think the opposite is true. I think once they developed Apple Silicon and they realized what they had on their hands and what they could do with it on a desktop machine, because it was because it was still a cousin of what they were doing on the mobile side anyway, they said, What if we could take this and put it in an iPad? And then, you know, and then that really will turn iPad OS into something with a lot of potential. And so uh, either way, I really hope that one or the other of those, like they both lead to the same conclusion. So I don't really care about the details that much. What it means is right, we get right. a huge update to iOS. Like last year, you know, Mac OS was the focus. We finally went from 10 to 11. Uh, I'm hoping this year we just go to 11.1. I hope we don't go to 12. Um, yeah. Although at this point, you know, all bets are off. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to call it. Um, it'll be Weapon X for all we know. And, you know, whatever. Uh, maybe this year the focus will be the iPad because we just got the new M1 iPad and they really, and I'm really hoping that what they're going to do is go, we want to show you what it can do. And the way that we're going to do that is by turning iOS into something useful, something functional, something that people have been begging us for since 10 years ago when we gave you the, you know, 13 years ago when we gave you the iPad in the first place. Um, we, you know, now, it can do all of the things that you want it to do and be the thing that you want it to be. And people like people like Andrew, Andrew or over at Mac Observer, people like Federico Vitici, who are iPad first people who do this all the time and want it to be that way, are willing to make the trades in order to continue to make the iPad their primary device. And I'm hopeful that less of those trade-offs will be necessary going forward. Absolutely. Well, it's going to be fun to, uh, to watch. It's going to be fun to to, to talk about it post WWDC. And I'm looking forward to us. <laughs> Once I'm spectacularly wrong and nobody says a word and, and, about and thread radios or new Apple TVs. <laughs> yeah, I say maybe every single thing we just talked about is was was completely wrong. But I, I tend to doubt it's going to be that way. So the entire um, announcement is just AirPods. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's really what's going to happen. Um so, uh, uh, yeah, so stay tuned next week and uh, we'll be uh, talking about post uh, WWDC and see what happens and what, if we were right, if we were right, if we were wrong and, uh, and, and stuff maybe we won't, we don't even know about. So, um, let's go ahead and move on to some tips here. I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, there's been a couple articles talking about, um, iOS 14.6 and the battery life. Mm-hmm. It's been draining, uh, uh quite a bit. Uh, we got our friends over at OSX Daily that have a great article here talking about some tips on how to, to help uh, improve battery battery life um and i've talked we've talked about this numerous times so it doesn't matter which version of the ios you have this is always tends to be a, a common issue when it comes to uh, uh battery life um 
uh, it, uh, a couple of tips they give is one's good one. I agree this one a, a lot is leaving your iPad or your or your iPhone for that matter plugged in and o- uh, and online overnight for background system tasks to complete. So that that'll save you a ton of mm-hmm. battery life because background tasks are always going off. I totally make sure you dis that you disable background app refresh um, because. Uh, uh, I don't even know why that even exists. To be honest with you, I mean, I think a lot of people turn it off because it's just you know, I don't I don't need the app to refresh all the time and be, be sucking mm-hmm. up battery life here. So, um, always a good idea to go into your battery overview to see what is taking up a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, battery space, battery mm-hmm. you know, life. Interesting. Family members have been complaining about uh, about battery life on their, their iPhones, and and I go in and I look at them and I say I'm not giving any specific specific who it is, but uh, it uh, uh, they uh, do a lot of FaceTime FaceTime uh, uh, video chats with, mm-hmm. with the family, and uh, that's notorious for battery life. Uh, and 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 unfortunately, people just don't well, understand that. That yeah. and I, know, I mean, it's it's doing a lot like that. I think it's just because people don't don't necessarily take all of it into account because you've got video going back and forth at, you know, reasonable quality. You've got audio going back and forth at reasonable quality. So you're using, you know, you're using the camera, you're using the microphone and, you know, and, and you're sending as you're trying to send and receive instantaneously on that. And I, and, and that's a lot to ask a device to do period, whatever it is. I mean, if you are a person who has to attend meetings online, regularly like if you're doing zoom meetings and stuff uh you'll hear the fans and you know because it your computer you you are asking your computer to do a lot when you're doing a zoom meeting because it's all instantane you know you are broadcasting a live stream at the same time you are watching the live stream of the other person that you're talking to and that's a lot so i think it's absolutely i think it's just sometimes not necessarily characterized like you know it's not it's it's a whole lot more than a phone call and i think that's Part of why people go like, all I'm doing is FaceTiming. Why is my battery dying? Yeah. Um, so go into that battery overview. At that, Apple did a great job. I think they added that in iOS 13, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. And uh, that gives you such a good comprehensive view of what apps are really uh, sucking up all mm-hmm. your battery life. And fa- uh, Facebook is pretty pretty notorious for that too. If you use the mm-hmm. Facebook app, uh, and, and mail will tend to be on that top of that the, the top three list a lot too. But it is what it is when it comes to that. But yeah. Another, another but if you don't here, want it to be, but, you can take it off push, which yeah, you know means it's not checking. Yeah. Like you don't have to have mail in what I call toddler mode because people have asked like, what is push? Push is yeah. your phone going to the mail server and going, give mail. How about now? How about now? How about yeah. now? How about now? Keep, How about now? Keep checking. Keep checking. That's all it's doing. And so you can tell it like, you know, if, if you are in a position where you only need, need to know about new mail 15 minutes at a time, then switch that setting and call it good. Um, yeah. Another thing you can do is use uh, screen time. You can go look at screen time and see what apps you're using a lot. And yep. that because it may not necessarily be that, you know, you are asking your phone to do a lot. It may be that you're using an app that's really inefficient. Uh, Facebook is one that is really inefficient. And there are uh, games that are that can be really inefficient at like what it's what they're doing with your battery life or maybe, you know, not not respecting your battery life. Um, and that's another one that you can sort of uh, that you can use to to sort of triangulate. Like if you look at if you look at screen time and you look at battery usage, like you'll find that the stuff at the top usually will match. And so that, you know, if they don't, if you've got something that you don't spend a lot of time in, that's like your number one yeah. battery consumer, that's when you can start looking at other settings and see what else it's up to when you're not using it. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, the also the podcast app, that's another app that if you use the Apple podcast app, which I'm not a fan of, I really just don't like the podcast app at all. Pocket Casts is probably one of my, is one of my favorites. Uh, and uh, it, it if you have it set, and, and and a lot of people have them set to automatically download new episodes. So, yeah, that's mm-hmm. of course it's going to start hitting your battery life because the, it's going out just like you just said. You, know, you want a, a new episode? New episode? New episode? It's just like hey, mail. Yeah. You, I want mail. How mail. about now? How about now? How about now? Yeah. yeah. Turn it off. And I mean, I I want it off, and I just I, I when I want the uh, the new episodes to download, I'll open the app and then just give me a refresh of the list mm-hmm. of what's, what's what's going on. So. Yeah. It, so check that one for sure. If you want to do yeah. some prolonged the battery life, you can use low power mode, which I'm not a huge fan of, uh, but it, it, it does help. Uh, if you go into settings, battery, and then you can <clears> go into low power mode, uh, turn that on. That'll once once the battery goes below twenty percent, it'll start 
uh, it'll start uh, conserving power for you yeah. uh, to check that. Well, you can um, use you can use low power all the time. It doesn't you know it doesn't right, have to be whatever right. your whatever it is. But it does. You can have it turn on automatic. I think you can turn it off as well. But it'll start sort of lessening the stuff that it's doing in the background and things. If right. you know once you hit once you hit the twenty percent, I like that it's an option. Um, I don't always like. I don't really use it very much, um, but I do appreciate that it's there. Uh, I'm Team Overcast, and what I did was I just set all of mine to stream yeah. because I was downloading listening downloading yeah, episodes I wasn't idea. always getting to listen to, and I'm almost always, especially now, I'm basically always on Wi-Fi, so I don't mind. Like, yeah, I can download. Like, if I know I'm headed somewhere, like if I from I live in Portland, and if I was driving to the Oregon coast, there's a stretch where there's no cellular reception or Wi-Fi of any kind. So if I want to listen to podcasts 100% of the way, or if I want right. to listen to music 100% of the way, I have to have it local. So then I will go in and I'll go, I'm going to download these five things or download this audio book for offline or whatever. And then I have something to listen to the entire trip. But for the most part, like I just stream them and then I don't have to worry about it taking up any space. And I just sort of go in when I want to listen to a podcast, I can open it up and go, what's new? And then just pick the one I want. So, um, yeah. that, and that setting is usually a universal setting in whatever you use. Like in Overcast, it's probably the same as it is in Pocket Cast, is in Castro, is in whatever else is out there that, that people could use that are not Apple Podcasts, uh, which also still is having trouble delivering episodes in a timely manner, said the host of a daily podcast. So that's a thing that can also be a problem. Yes, it can. And then, um, <laughs> With any update to an, to iOS, you're always going to find bugs. I mean, they're, 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 I mean, no matter what you're, you're, it just it just seems like. I mean, I've been covering iOS for such a long time now, and it isn't, there isn't a time I don't ever recall that battery life. Oh my God, battery life is just drained when I updated to this new version of iOS. It, it, mm-hmm. it just happens. So Apple re- realizes it. So we're at 14.6. I would not be at all surprised. 14.6.1 may come out to fix a bug that might be by causing it, but it's you know. If it's out of the ordinary, no, it really isn't. Uh, but a lot of griping on social media about it uh, as yeah. of late. So I just wanted to. Well, that was why I wanted to bring this up and just be aware. It, it, it is what it is. You, you need to be on the latest OS. I mean, it just really, you really have to. Yeah. You don't really should not stay behind. I know. I have so many people that I know. They're like, oh, I'm not. I'm still on iOS 12, or I'm I'm still on iOS 13. Well, why at this point you need unless your device is at the end of the line, you can't upgrade. No, that just right. doesn't make sense. You always I understand should. 14.0. Yeah, I mean, when 14.0 came out, it was uh, it was you know you, you know that's the very first. You can hold off, and, and it's you can fine wait for that part. But the, but yeah. once the, the, the incremental updates no. start coming out, yeah. You know, don't avoid it. It, it, it really isn't going to make much sense here. So, uh, but so, yeah. Th- and like you can always, well, you can always sort of tell, right? So, especially what I have found can sort of be helpful is um, those third digit upgrades, like 14.6.1, right. that you said, you know, we're, we're presumably expecting um, hot on the heels of 14.6. Um, usually it's that dot one. Or in some cases, like the dot one never comes out and we just go to dot two immediately. Um, that's usually where the battery optimizations happen. And I find mm-hmm. that though you will get the most benefit from those battery optimizations if you are not on the latest device. So if you're on an 11 and you upgrade to like, you may want to stay at 14.5, whatever it was, um, and just give it a little bit of time for 14.6 to come out, for 14.61 yeah. to come out. Um, because if you're on an 11 or, or older, then uh, the battery impact stuff tends to hit those older devices harder. Right. So somebody who's using some one of the few people who didn't trade in their 10R from the the article at the top of the show, um, if you're using that as your daily driver, and uh, you know you're going to see a battery hit from that if you're on a ten, if you're on a 10R, if you're on an 11, yeah. uh, you know if you're on something older, you're going to see that that battery that that battery hit is going to hit you a lot harder than it's going to hit somebody who doesn't have a battery that's quite that old. So take that like. Take, wait until because usually the the third digit releases are the ones that come out like the fastest. So right. we got fourteen six. So like fourteen six one is going to come any minute, and you know you don't necessarily have to go to six. Like you know in this particular case, you don't have to go to six because it's not a massive security thing that is an active exploit that we need to make sure is fixed. Right. But right. uh, but for but like you can wait if you're on like an eleven or older. Like wait for fourteen six one, and you'll be able to. Um, uh, use it and not have it hugely impact your battery life. It seems like if you're not on the new, on the latest and greatest, uh, if you wait for that third digit, you'll usually be in much better shape if if you have battery issues in the first place. 
absolutely. All right, and then we got a couple app updates I wanted to, t- to touch upon here. Uh, the first one is yeah. uh, fi- Firefox. Um, they launched a huge major update for not only Mac and uh, uh, but also iOS. Um, they uh, refreshed the design, streamlined the toolbar and the tabs. Uh, this is uh, the version eighty nine for the Mac, and of course Windows and Linux as well for for that as well. But these changes also apply to the iOS and Android builds too. Um, and a new, fresh new design, easier to use tabs, streamlined tool- toolbar, and <laughs> optimized iOS experience that that's uh probably a big thing just just making it easier for navigation i've always been a pretty big firefox fan i've, I've used i use firefox is my default browser on my mac so i've been using that quite a bit i don't use it as much on ios i don't know if you do kelly but um uh but not really uh, it's good to see that they've they've doing some they're doing some uh, updates to it and and you know as we all knew back in the old days the iphone uh the, the browser was safari you know and else you wouldn't even use any other browser but now with that now the ability of being making any browser your default browser mm-hmm. um you know firefox might be a compelling uh, reason to to take a look at it it does have bookmark syncing so you can sign in with a you create a firefox account and mm-hmm. allows you then i do that all my all my bookmarks and uh and, and when my bookmarks bar and then all my bookmarks are synced across all my devices so i can go in and have all my bookmarks everywhere so i don't have to think about exporting mm-hmm. as we always do with bookmarks into one place or another so uh so check yeah. that out uh, yeah, firefox for ios and uh see it might be something about you, you might like and it's it, it's an it's an a pretty cool experience on the iPad um, uh, as well. So, and, and you might might find it to be a better experience than using Safari or or Chrome or Edge for that matter. So, um, so mm-hmm. check that out. But then the other big thing this past week was uh, Apple updated all the iWork apps for iOS as well as Mac. Uh, for uh, uh, that includes Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. Um, the biggest thing they did is they added it with uh, added new linking features uh, within the. the uh, uh, pages and numbers. Uh, so what that'll do is that it's going to uh, relate it to schoolwork and the ability to link web pages, which I always found pages was always challenging to, to do linking web pages. You know, I'm using I'm mm-hmm. so used to using Google Docs like I use for my show notes, and I love uh, that you can you can right click and, and actually show the and, and convert the the link into a uh, into an actual name of the of the, the of the story, and and you can just hover over it and it gives you an actual preview of, of the site. So I, I was. I'm good to see, glad to see that Apple is really doing uh, due diligence of keeping these apps up to date because they are free, and amazingly enough, and you, they work just as well as so you're not necessarily you having to have Microsoft Office. Uh, but uh, for those of us who work in the enterprise, we kind of have to have that. But <laughs> uh, uh, so it, it's it's cool to see that they've done some uh, some other stuff. Uh, it looks like in more shapes, objects, lines, text boxes, all kinds of stuff within pages uh, and numbers uh, that. Uh, uh, has has some uh, good good updates, and then they they did do some updates for Apple Schoolwork feature, which is part of the student uh, teacher uh, uh, experience with using it as well. So you used I, I you love Keynote, I know that you use Keynote. I, th- I like Keynote as well. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad. glad I pre- to see well, I prefer it. Like I've used both. I've used PowerPoint and Keynote. Uh, oh, I've used too. Google. I've used Google Slides. Um, I have used all of them. Um, but if I have to take if I have to start from zero and end up with a presentation myself, if it's up to me 100% and I have to do it from nothing, I'm going to pick keynote every day and twice on Sunday because uh, it's the easiest to work with, at least for me, because it all works the way all the Apple stuff works. And I'm very familiar with that. So like, yeah, sure. that's totally just my bias showing, but I also feel like, uh, like the build options and and some of the other little fit and finish bits of things that you can do are a lot right. easier to make your presentation with like a slide where something builds in or the the transitions are a little bit more interesting because when I've tried to do that stuff in PowerPoint, it yeah. tends to be really hard. It seems like and uh, and I I prefer not uh, having to mess with any of that. So I was really okay. excited to see these updates. Um, yeah. And part of the reason was part of the reason I was, I was glad about them is because I like when Apple sort of reminds us that all of the stuff that they have, that they care about all the stuff that they have and that these sort of changes are things that people want, like the linking stuff that you were talking about. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, and I, and, and I'm glad that, that those things happen. And, and I like when these things tend to get more useful, like on my devices as well, because like, if it turns out that I get to actually go to a conference at some point ever again, (laughs) and like, I would really love to just roll up with my iPad and have everything I need for the first time because it's never happened before. 
before. And I would really love to just have my presentation on my iPad and roll up and be like, hi, plug in and give my presentation from my iPad and not have to huff my laptop across the country. I am, I'm just presuming that I'm going to get to go to a conference that's really far away. So, um, I, I like when, when these things continue to evolve and, and because this is the sort of thing that tells me that Apple is listening to the people who actually use this stuff and they've gotten feedback about this is the kind of stuff that I want to do or the kind of stuff that is hard right now that I would like to be better and that they're doing things to improve it. Absolutely. All right. We have come to a close of this fine episode for this week. Let's go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, okay. That is a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS, and you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others. But better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where you can find all the links to all the ways to listen to us. There, there. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Kelly, thanks so much for being coming back to the show. And we're going to have you again back next week, too, to talk about post yes. the WWDC. So uh, tell everybody where yes. they can find you. Uh, you can find me being spectacularly wrong about other things five days a week over at the Mac Observer Daily Observations podcast. Uh, mostly, okay, I, I'm sort of joking because every day I get the day right because I it's a daily show. And so I introduce it every day with the date. And uh, so far, I'm 100% on broadcasting the correct one. Um, you can also find me over at the incomparable network at the incomparable.com where I host a show called, I want my MCU TV. And, uh, I also am a panelist on other pod- other episodes of things that happen there, as I mentioned earlier in the show. And, uh, you can find me on the after show podcast with, uh, Mike Rose, which, um, has an erratic at best publishing schedule. So <laughs> whenever we can manage to find time to get together, uh, that will happen again. And uh, the rest of the time, you can find me on Twitter as Verso. All right. Well, thanks for being here and uh, look forward to having you back next week. Along with Mr. Jeff Gamut, they're both going to be on the show and we're going to yes. get, get, get this is going to be a spectacular episode next week for <laughs> giving us our post uh, WWDC uh, 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 impressions of what, uh, what what happened and was announced and all that fun stuff so until then i appreciate everybody listening i hope you enjoyed this week's show and uh really thanks for you listening and we'll talk again soon